I want to ask you about a book a number of us have been reading here in Knowlton, The Big Why, uh, which is based upon Rockwell Kent, the American artist who came to Newfoundland in 1914 and uh, got himself into trouble. Uh, could you tell us something about the origins of that book? What attracted you to, to Rockwell Kent? What exactly was the uh, appeal to him? Why did you think, hey, here's a story I can retell in a certain way? Right, so uh, I, I didn't know anything about Rockwell Kent really. I had seen a, an art installation, uh, you know, a, a, there had been a retrospective of his work at one of the galleries in St. John's, but I was out in Brigus one day and a friend of mine uh, had brought me out there and he said, oh, I can show you Rockwell Kent's house. And I said, what do you mean? Is that still mm -hmm. around? He said, sure, it's just on the other side of the cove here. We'll go, we'll go around and walk to it. So when you walk out there, it's the only house on that side of the, the Brigus Bay and there's no uh, electrical wires or anything there so it takes about half an hour to walk out there and when you walk for a half an hour in nature to a house that has no uh, power to it and no running water you essentially are transported back a hundred years mm -hmm. to the time when Rockwell Kent first saw that house it was a, it's an easy thing to do with the mind and so I love this idea and I asked about him I said what happened to Rockwell Kent and my friend said well he was kicked out for being a German spy. I thought, oh, that's pretty funny, you know, that, that that happened. And he said, oh, but that's not the end of the story. Um, like, in the late 60s, uh, uh, Joey Smallwood found the correspondence between Rockwell Kent and the Newfoundland government back in 1916. And, uh, you know, the New, uh, the New Yorker had, you know, published a ditty, uh, you know, in the 30s saying, that day will mark a precedent, which brings no news of Rockwell Kent. Yeah, and uh, so Joey Smallwood had realized, oh yeah, that was in the 30s, and you know, it's, a, it's the late 60s now, there's this famous American painter who we kicked out of the, the nation. I should write his descendants a letter of apology. So he did that, and uh, Kent's uh, descendants passed Rockwell Kent the letter because he was still alive. still alive. He lived to be 91. And Rockwell Kent wrote Joey Smallwood back and said, no hard feelings. Well, Joey couldn't believe it, that the guy was still alive, and he said, well, why don't you come back as a guest of the Newfoundland government, the house is still there, and regale us of the stories of being, you know, quote, a German spy. So I just thought that was a great, um, you know, arc for a character. Uh, you know, you go to some place when you're young, uh, bad things happen, and then in old age, you know, there's an apology. Mm. And, uh, and also at that time, you know, Wayne Johnston had been writing historical novels and, and, and Michael Crummy was writing historical fiction and I thought, surely I, I can do that. If, the, if these, you know, I know these, these, these people, you know, I, I, I can do that, I could do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um, I set out to write this historical novel. It was terrible. Uh, my, my girlfriend uh, told me that. She said, you know, this is really, really bad. You're not that kind of writer. So. Uh, I asked Wayne Johnson, I said, what, what is the definition anyway of historical fiction? He said, oh, it's where the action of the novel takes place prior to the author's birth. And so I thought about that and I thought, well, I'm, I was born in the 1965, Kent lived to 1971. If I write the book ostensibly as Kent, as a very old man, writing about his past, it's not a historical novel because I was born, I was, I was, the author was alive. Mm -hmm. And so if Kent, you know, confuses the sail on a boat or he doesn't get the historical facts right about Newfoundland life, he's just an old guy who's kind of forgotten the past. Mm -hmm. So that was my way into writing the kind of book I'm capable of writing. Mm -hmm. um, and just the, the basic narrative of stranger comes to town, bad things happen, he gets kicked out, that kind of Clint Eastwood do, yes. movie, uh, that helped me just have uh, the basic parameters of what would occur in the novel. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't his art that... that, that not at all. Not at all. Oh, that's I interesting. I, I, I'm not really that uh, drawn to his art. I like his woodcuts a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I find his, uh, his oil paintings a little romantic. Uh, there's kind of like a, an idea that he writes, that he paints from, and then it, it, it is it's a different thing for me. That's the other thing that appealed to me was everything that he did in life and the way he created art, I thought that's exactly the opposite of the way I do things. And I thought it's time for me to 
to write about a character who is completely not like me. Mm -hmm. So that was exciting too. Now the thing is, I was, you know, if you write about anybody who's completely the opposite of you, you realize that uh, character is not, is not a, a pull with, uh, you know, uh, with opposites at either end. It's more of a, a circle. And the further around you get to the circle, the very close you get to your mm -hmm. polar, what we thought was the polar opposite. Mm -hmm. You're very similar actually in the end. So there was a lot of things where I thought to myself, what would I do in the situation? Okay, mm -hmm. I'll have Rockwell Kent do the exact opposite. And, but those accumulated into a kind of a character who in the end, I sort of thought was very similar to me in an odd way. Oh. That's, and you also wrote a book about writing that book, or something like, this all happened. Right, yeah. Uh, what was going on there? What was going on in your mind writing a book about writing another book? Right, well that was my first novel, so I hadn't, I hadn't written the, the, the Rockwell Kent novel yet, but I was planning on writing it. And uh, I hadn't written a novel before, I'd just written short stories. So um, uh, it was back when the, the 500th anniversary of John Cabot bumping into Newfoundland mm -hmm. had occurred and there was you know, government money for uh, you know, people playing the fiddle or making a play or something and I thought, well, you know, John Cabot kept a, a log book of, oh, so that's where it comes from. of things that happened to him and I thought, well, if I, if I do the same thing as John Cabot but instead of, you know, um, the terrain and the climate of the ocean and stuff like that, if I talked about the emotional terrain of the people of Newfoundland for a calendar year, that would be my project and lo and behold a truckload of money came down in my driveway and, you know, landed in my living room and they said, yes, write this book. So that's what I did, I wrote, I wrote This All Happened and uh, it's, it's about two and a half years of my life collapsed into one it, year. Oh, I see. And there's about 300 characters that I collapse into eight principal characters. Mm -hmm. So that's the conversion of real life into uh, mm -hmm. fiction. But in that book, yeah, I'm just beginning to think about the Rockwell Kent book. I see. It was an ingenious book. I mean, I, 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 I've enjoyed it enormously. Mm -hmm.